Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. The Android TV remotes are becoming minimal day by day, with buttons limited to do the basic tasks. Some remotes lack a dedicated button for mute, whereas some remotes lack a shortcut for inputs. There are also dedicated buttons for OTT apps which we might not use at all. So there are apps for remapping the remote buttons to help us customize what each button can do as per our requirements. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use one such wonderful app to remap your remote buttons. It's called TV Quick Actions. Along with that, I'll show you how to provide accessibility permissions to any app if your TV doesn't allow it natively. So let's get started. You can find the TV Quick Actions on the TV Play Store. But while searching the app, don't keep any space between TV and Quick. The app costs $2, but because I already bought it, I am directly getting the install option. It's definitely worth the price. You can check the features in the video and take a call. If you don't want to spend on the app, you anyway have the button mapper free version to use. Once you open the app for the first time, it welcomes you with a walkthrough. It would ask for accessibility service permission. Some Android TVs like the Shield TV Pro I'm using do provide the accessibility service menu under settings and it's easy to provide the permission like I'm doing here. But some Android TVs like the OnePlus TV have this menu hidden and without providing permission, the app wouldn't work. So in such a case, we can provide permission using the ADB method. So to carry out the ADB method, we need to set a couple of things on the TV first. Go to About section in Settings and click on Build Number for 7 times. This will enable the Developer Options on the TV. Once you get the Developer Options, open it and scroll to Debugging section. Turn on USB Debugging option. After turning it on, it is important that you restart the TV for taking it into effect. Now, you would need a desktop or laptop to execute the ADB command. Download SDK platform tools on your computer. I will leave a link for this file in the description. Extract the zip file and open the folder on your computer. Now connect the TV and your computer with a USB cable to send the ADB command for the accessibility permissions. As both the computer and the TV have USB female ports, we would need a USB A to USB A cable. I have one, but as it is a short cable, I use this extender to reach my desktop. I will leave a link to these cables in the description if you want to check them out. Once you connect them with the USB, you should immediately get this window prompt on your TV to allow debugging from the computer. Tap on Always Allow from this computer. Now go back to the folder on your computer, hold Shift button on your keyboard and right click to select Open PowerShell window here. Once this window is opened, type ADB Devices and press Enter to see if your TV is listed as connected or not. Mine shows connected. Now once it shows connected, all you have to do is type the exact code shown on the screen and press enter. The required permissions would be provided for the app automatically. This code can be used for any app that needs accessibility services. Only difference is that the underlined part in both the codes need to be changed with the package name of the app you want to give the permission to. You can find the package name in the settings apps. It will be listed below the app name. So if you want to give permission for any other app, let's say Apple TV, use the package name of it in the code instead. Once the accessibility permission is provided, you will also need to provide permission to display over other apps. 
that can be easily provided from the app settings in special app access. This is how the home screen of the app looks like. It will show here what's new with the latest version. As you can see there have been so many version updates regularly pushed by the developer to add features and tackle bugs. It's definitely a positive thing. Next we have actions menu where we can add the actions for any button. Once you click on add, you need to select the remote button you want to set actions. Obviously some buttons like the volume keys or voice assistant navigation keys can't be mapped. Once you press any key to map, it will be listed here. Now in the button action type, we have two options. The first one is one action where when you map a button, you get to assign three actions. One for its single press, one for double press and one for long press. So basically three actions from a single button. But if we choose the quick actions panel, we get to assign five actions. When we press the map button, we get a panel like this with different actions assigned for each direction. One for up, one for down, one for center or the OK button, one for left and one for right. You can access all those with the navigation keys. This is just amazing. Imagine giving 5 actions for every single button. The possibilities are numerous. Now going into the list of options we get to assign, the actions are categorized into 7 sections. Apps, Actions, Feature, Key Code, URL, TV Inputs and App Shortcut. The app section has shortcuts for all the installed apps you can map any of the apps for any button to open. For example, the Netflix button on the remote can be mapped to open Hotstar. It's up to you. The action section has toggle Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to quickly turn them on or off. Power dialog for getting power menu, shortcut for home, opening notifications, taking a screenshot just by click of a button, Side menu is the app drawer. Setting shortcut if your remote lacks a setting button. The recent and previous app won't work for all TVs, but you can try your luck. Then there's back key, sleep, swipe options, assistant shortcut and media buttons. Any of these actions can be easily mapped to button of your choice. The feature section is actually the gold mine. The media control panel is an overlay panel that can be used to control your media like music or video playback with the navigation keys. The cursor option is like a mouse mode where you get a pointer on the screen and it can be moved with navigation keys. To swipe in any direction we have to double tap the navigation key in the direction like this. So if we have apps that do not respond to remote navigation, this mode can be used. The recent apps once activated can list the apps that are used recently. This thing is a hit or a miss right now, but hopefully improves in the next update. Next is the Bluetooth Manager. This opens an overlay on the screen with a list of Bluetooth devices available and paired. We can easily connect them instead of going deep into the settings. Sleep timer to set a timer for taking TV to sleep. Record video is another great option to record the screen of the TV. Though it won't record your OTT content due to copyright issues, gaming and navigation can be easily recorded. And you can see that the quality is really good. Night mode is one of my favorite feature. This opens up an interface to set a filter on the screen of colors like black, red, yellow, purple, etc. for ease of watch during nights. We can change the intensity too. I like to use the black filter with high intensity to quickly reduce the brightness for my viewing in the night. And the final feature in this section, dock with applications and my most favorite too. 
let me show you how it looks. On click of a button, you can get the app dock at the bottom and you can easily scroll through the installed apps to open any. This makes switching through apps like butter. This does remind me of the LG Web OS, such a lovely feature. The key code section has a bunch of shortcuts for media, copy paste etc. These need you to install lean keyboard to work. Next there is URL section where we can set a particular website as shortcut, provided you have a browser installed on the TV. Just set any URL as shortcut for the button and the browser would automatically open the site for you. Would be useful if you regularly access any sites on the browser. Next we have HDMI input section. As the name suggests we can assign any button to open any particular input. This will be used for elderly people who can't navigate around the Android TV menu to open the HDMI TV. And the last section is shortcuts for apps that can provide any shortcuts actions inside the app. There are limited apps that support, so you can try if they are listed here. Now there is one thing to note that, when we provide accessibility permissions for this app, the volume control by long press will be disabled. It's due to the Android limitation. We have to keep tapping to change the volume instead of long pressing. So just remember that. So that's all the numerous things that you can do with this app. Isn't it wonderful? I'm sure the developer would add more interesting features to the app. I hope this video was useful and you like the app. Do share your thoughts in the comments. Like, share and subscribe for more such content. Make sure to